Um, so this is the W3C call. We have these every two weeks. Um, the focus of each one is to try to um, build the standards which underpin Open Active um, and help to really um, support all the data publishers and data users in what they're doing, which is sharing data to get people more active. Um, so uh, the focus of this call is on disabilities. We had a previous call, which I'll, I'll touch on, um, which covered that topic. And the focus of this call is to um, ensure that accessibility is, is well covered in the standards and that everyone has an opportunity to share their thoughts. Um, so, uh, yeah, can we just go through quickly and just do a, an intro from everybody, but very brief. Who wants to go first? <laughs> I'll, I'll go first. Um, I'm Izzy Champion. I'm a data and innovation manager at Sport England and I lead on Open Active from Sport England side. I'm Kevin Crow. I'm digital manager for um, the British Paralympic Association. Um, also looking after um, parasport.org.uk, which is our participation platform for um, Parasport. Um, hi, I'm Michelle Roberts, and I'm the Physical Activity and Health Program Manager for the Richmond Group of Charities. Um, this is not working. How do I get my photo on side? Sorry, uh, I haven't used this before. No, we can hear you. That's fine. Oh, okay, great. Can you yeah. see me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. Um, I'm Cecilia um, in the disability team at Sport England. Um, I haven't been involved um, really in the ODI work um, up to this point, so I'm quite new to it. Hi. <coughs> Hi, I'm Nick Evans from Sport England, uh, head of planning. So Izzy asked me to jump on the call in relation to some of the data we hold on active placing dis with regards to disability. Hi, I'm Paul Morgan. I'm from the Canal and River Trust. I'm the lead developer and I'm looking at how we can uh, use more accessibility to get people onto our tow paths around the uh, network. Hi, I'm uh, Kirsty Mulvey and I work on the um, Get Yourself Active project at Disability Rights UK. Everybody, we're missing one. Uh, I'm Melanie uh, and I work at the ODI as project manager, so I'm trying to coordinate things. Excellent. And Jade, is Jade coming? Because she's got a um, proposal that's in the in the slide deck. I'll, I can try and render it, but do you know if she's... Jade couldn't make it today. She's hoping someone else from EMD might. Great. Okay. Well, that's fine. We can, we'll make do with that. Um, okay. No problem at all. Uh, so, great. Thanks, everybody. That's really good. Um, so I'll just crack on and share my screen um, so you can see where I can do a quick intro. Um, my plan here is, um, sorry, to say I'm Nick Evans um, from the ODI. Um, that's useful, isn't it? The other Nick <laughs> Evans, there's two of us. Um, so I'll share my screen and uh, you can see these slides. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend about 15 minutes just running through what we've done to date. Um, and then hopefully the rest of the time can be a bit of a time to input on everything. Um, so that's that would be my plan. Uh, give me a sec. Um, I've joined via the the dial in. Is it possible to get the slides just on an email? Um, Michelle, which one group? Mel, are you able to facilitate that potentially? Yes, I, I can send them to Michelle. Who else is dialed in? Um, I had a but I'm, uh, I'm 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 going to the um, the Zoom page now. So. Oh, okay. I'll forward you to Michelle. Upgrading our Thank connections you. quickly. Sorry. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Okay. So you should be able to see some slides. You see those? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. So welcome to the W3C call. We've done that bit. Um, the first point in the agenda is accessibility. We'll cover any of the business for a few minutes at the end and the rest of it's a discussion. Um, so um, shall I jump into this or shall I wait a few seconds for people to kind of move calls, do you think? 
Okay. Is it who who is going to jump onto a different line? Are they? Are you okay to? Shall I just crack? I think, I think Kevin's just joined, so you should be all right. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I'm, no, please carry on. Okay, perfect, great. Uh, okay, so the work we've done today on accessibility, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, what we did was we looked at all the data that was currently being published in a big spreadsheet, and we looked at commonalities between the data, uh, and we decided to create a list. And this was the kind of last last group discussion we had last year. Um, create a list of uh, those, and that was our initial kind of stab at the controlled vocabulary um, that I'm, I'm going to talk about now. So it's the survey, the, the stuff I'm about to kind of talk about is is really just what's been published rather than what we should have. There's no kind of, in an ideal world, X. Um, it's very much bottom up rather than top down. Um, so there's two things. There's a property which is called accessibility information, which is a free text property. British Cycling, for example, have populated it with this information here. So um, this route has been uh, British Cycling assessed. Um, they've put some information in there about where you can find out more information. Um, but the fields at the moment where, where this has been filled in, um, the, the data sources haven't really been that specific. It's usually very generic like this, just a statement of their policy rather than specifically about an event. Um, nevertheless, this is an attribute on the event. So in theory, you could customize this per event um, to make it quite clear um, what, what the participants should and shouldn't expect. The other thing we have, so that's, that's kind of free text. The other thing we have is something called a controlled vocabulary, which is a fancy word for a big list um, of options. And that is this list. Uh, it was originally the top five. And, uh, and Jade, I think in... Um, in consultation with the EFDS has come up with a additional one which is social or behavioral problems and so we've got visual hearing physical and learning impairment as well as mental health issues and social and behavioral problems um, that's the list so a free text field and a, a kind of drop down that you can pick from um, and they, those two are both properties on events so you can use those to describe a particular event and can uh, you select more than one Nick from the drop down if you like yeah. That's right, you can, yeah. Um, so, I told you someone was going to say something or? It's just a sigh. Okay, so. That was, that was probably me joining online at, on, through the phone, I'm afraid. It's Ian here from Legend. Oh, hi, Ian. Welcome. Hi, sorry I'm a bit late. I had technical problems. No problem at all. Um, so we've just we've just started with the content. So um, we've just uh, we've just said that there's a effectively a drop down list of accessibility support options: visual, hearing, physical learning, and mental health issues, uh, as well as social behaviour problems. And there's also a free text uh, description, which are the two current ways you can describe accessibility. Um, that's that's what you've missed. Um, and proposals that we've got on the table today and this is by no means a kind of finite list of things obviously this is just stuff that jade has proposed which we'll talk about um but if you if anyone has any comments for anything further then um now is a good time to, to bring it up when we, when we go through this so um two additional properties uh, again from jade and emd in consultation with um efts is uh the is wheelchair accessible that's proposal 166 which is uh, true or false is the event wheelchair accessible, um, which is different to is the place wheelchair accessible. So this is about whether the event itself is suitable. Um, and then there's also uh, a special requirements list, which is proposal 67, which is a very big list. I won't read them all out, but to give those uh, who can't see the slides a flavor, uh, there are things like cancer support, dementia, stroke, autism, um, weight management, pregnancy. So it's a, a, quite a broad range of, of special requirements which um, you can tag again against the event itself. Um, and this is, this is uh, EMD's proposal. And so uh, they're the two new proposals. In addition to that, uh, before the call, we had uh, another suggestion, which I just thought I'd raise with everybody, uh, which is this disabled Go uh, icons. Um, so brilliant, they've got uh, 19 different icons that can be used uh, to assess a venue so you can and and they're quite well um described so it's it's more of a um objective measure of whether they're they uh, there are is there level access and automatic doors um is there a seat are there seats available is it um so um a toilet that's accessible 
uh, those kind of things. And so that's that's kind of what we've got at the moment. Um, so uh, I thought, Nick, do you mind if I ask a question? Yeah. Um, if you go back to the previous page, the one where you've got the well, what I call disabilities, actually. Um, when it says special re special requirements, in what ways autism is special requirement or cancer is special requirement? I'm not sure I get the context there. So forgive me if I've, I've kind of, uh, I should know that, but I don't quite get it. Uh, yes, yeah, so from, from my understanding of uh, EMD's proposal, um, these are special requirements that people might have in order to participate uh, in, a, in an activity. So uh, a special requirement that, that is autism is, uh, I have a special requirement that, that you can cater for autism if I turn up at your event. I think it was the context. So it's less special, special it's best, okay. So it's less about special requirements. You play, you have to have autism to uh, take part in that event, but that it's friendly to autism or Parkinson's or um, eyesight problems. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yes, that sounds like probably a, a better name for the property. Um, okay. I my initial feedback on this list is that um, it's a bit of a mixture of things, without mm. wanting to create a thousand different lists, but. Um, autism, as the example given, is quite different from residential home slash day centre. And, you know, that could mean a variety of things as well, whether that's for older people, with people people who have special needs. Um, I mean, I'm by no means the expert, so please chip in people who have more experience in this area. But um, the, the list itself, from a data perspective, looks a bit kind of jumbled, a kind of mixture of things. That was my kind of initial take on it. Yeah, I think I would reiterate that. So it's Michelle from Richmond Group. Um, it, yeah, it feels a little bit like <laughs> a mixed a mixed bag, and I'm just um, kind of wondering about how people sort of would identify with with some of these or with the previous property list. Um, because, for example, I, I represent charities um, of people with long term conditions, and they wouldn't necessarily say that they have impairment. It might be you know, they've, they've got lots, lots of things going on is how people may describe it. Um, so you're just trying to make it so that it's relevant to people, I guess. The, yeah. uh, another comment here is just looking at some of the work we do in Canada where they're um, more strongly focused, I think, on, uh, on support, is that they would tend to say uh, this particular activity su supports disabilities. And they wouldn't say it's for autism or Parkinson's or stroke. It wouldn't be at that level of granularity. But I think the fact is, if they're, if they're aware of disabilities, it's, it's, it supports them, then it kind of probably supports most. There may be a distinction between the physical type of disabilities, which means you can't do some aspects. So, you know, if you've got, um, oh. so for example, Parkinson's uh, means there's things you physically can't do. Whereas autism is just, you have to address the, uh, the customer in certain ways and you want to avoid noise and that sort of thing so the the the, the I, again it's, it's what what the customer will get out of that and mm. whether you can sensibly tag things up with with anything less than most of these items i suppose uh, is it worth it's a question i suppose worth asking the group is is do we think this level of granularity i suppose is so i suppose there's two discussions here there's is this type of information useful to capture and then is there is this the best way of capturing information um and so i suppose we probably should step back to the first of those questions which is do we actually think this is so it sounds like what ian's saying is is that some systems it's really not this detailed anyway we just capture the very basic kind of the, is, is this accessibility friendly, which I imagine experts would say is, is pretty useless information for people who actually have some of these conditions um, because, it's, because it's much more nuanced than that. Um, so, but, but do we think that, that this kind of is actually useful? Um, sorry, it's Kevin from the um, um, British Paralympic Association. Um, I mean, my, my take on the special requirements list is that um, it's great to have the option to um, where possible give that more level of more information um, but um, I mean not being an, an, an expert in, in, in the various things on the list but um, I suggest um, for most um, most activities it's very difficult to uh, um, ascertain whether you're um, you are in fact friendly to the various different types of for example people affected by stroke there can be 
such a range that actually it's, it's probably quite difficult to to make a, a blanket judgment and therefore does it become useful um to um people who have cognitive problems versus people who have mobility um problems around stroke for example that's just one example so um i don't know the answer so that's just 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 one take that i think is actually quite difficult to for people who are entering their um opportunity data to actually know the answer to these questions um and uh, can i just make another point um just what one of the other things, and I don't sort of if this is jumping around ever so slightly, um, but on the um, um, on the, the question of uh, accessibility of of the place versus the event, um, and that's um, and and just on a more general point, it's fantastic to see the amount of the thinking work that has gone in has gone to, into this so far. Because I think the conversations we've had um, previously, um, perhaps because the, the standard hadn't um, wasn't enforcing anything more detailed that we weren't aware. So this is fantastic to see. Um, on the following um, on the following slide, the the, the, the disabled go icons, um, which are um, about the uh, the place and the accessibility of the place. Um, I um, what I think we're we we're, um, we're taking from the research that we're looking into at the moment is um, information about the accessibility of the and um, uh, what what is available to support um, people taking part in the sport or the event so is there a wheelchair um, a racing wheelchair available because you can't necessarily do wheelchair racing in in in, in the normal chair that you'd use is there um, an adaptive um, boat if you're wanting to do rowing so it's about the actual um there's, there's things around the place which i think you know there's there's, there's good stuff in there um uh, in the disabled go list um but then there's also an element of um, if I go along, I'm a wheelchair user, but I can't, you know, I don't, I'm not going to buy a really expensive chair to take part in wheelchair basketball. So mm. does this wheelchair basketball um, opportunity provide chairs? Likewise, you know, you can't play wheelchair rugby in a normal wheelchair. Mm. Um, uh, wheelchair, power chair as well, you know, how, you know, the power chair football with me, that, that's something that you use a power chair football. So it, it's, it's um, I wonder if there's a field or, um, some vocabulary around um, equipment to take part in the sport as well as the accessibility of the place and therefore saying that the event is accessible. So just a, um, a quick 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 thought on that would be um, that further, further up we've got this accessibility information kind of free text field um, so I suppose it's worth just um, differentiating here um, lists like this one which is so I'm pointing at the um, accessibility support lists of visual, hearing and, and physical, which allow you to filter on things that are specifically relevant to you versus lists w w versus free text, which is a bit more like access accessibility information, which gives you the information to reassure you that this is a relevant opportunity and that, you know, if, if you need a chair when you get there, there are chairs. Um, and so I guess to um, kind of, I guess, probe that on that question slightly, do you think that people are filtering for wheelchair basketball where chairs are provided or do you think it's more a case of them having reassurance that probably there are because probably you know that's the kind of target audience they're looking for and yeah so I, I, my, my assumption my assumption would be that people don't know um that there are chairs that exist you know some people will, will have um, varying degrees of knowledge of the sport before they try to find it but i think yeah. if you are a wheelchair user um knowing that um being reassured is 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 certainly um, I don't think you would be searching necessarily for one that has equipment, but you would be looking for the opportunity and then to be reassured ahead of actually thinking about the question. Uh, that would be my my feeling. I don't know if anyone else has got any view on that. It, it sounded like that what we're looking for is to be able to search for things that support disabilities, such as wheelchair basketball, and having found it, they want to browse through the options and say, oh, I have some free text information uh, we do provide uh, wheelchair, sorry, basketball wheelchairs, or uh, I don't know what the exact term would be. So I, I think that Nick's right. There's a difference between searching for things, and the, I think realistically we have to do broad searching there, because there'll be a very small number of events which are specifically for disabled basketball. So going down to that level of granularity is prob not, probably not helpful, but having found a list of events which are for disabilities of their basketball, then it would be good to know that 
these two events have actually got wheelchairs available and those two don't because that may affect your decision to join. So I put that in, I see that more as a free text description, um, additional information type field rather than a, a, a tag type field. Nick, didn't we have, didn't we have um, equipment in the, in, the, in the data model or not? No, we, we removed it in favour of having a free text, another free text field called attendee information, which is uh, where you, you could put equipment information as free text. Um, but we, 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 I think we, we basically decided to combine um, the uh, what, would I, what do I need to bring with me, which is, you know, bottle water trainers and equipment, which is, um, you know, I need, I need um, also trainers, potentially, and the overlap there into just one free field where people could just... Um, Type that all in. Yeah, because we <coughs> we still have an equipment field on the site level there, on the active places data, and we have we have things like the pool. It does specify where things like pool hoists are at centres and things like that. So you you get automatically get an understanding. Do they have a certain amount of disability kind of equipment at the centre? Interesting. So that's a place based. Um, back, back back to that badges question. Um, so if we before we just revisit the badges question. Um, I just thought it was worth picking up on the, the previous point um, about the wheelchair basketball as an activity type. Um, so there's a, a slightly different angle here is, is it worth tagging some activities as disability friendly or something with some level of granularity? So if I have a hearing impairment, I can look at activities that are that work for me. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it doesn't kind of make sense with some of these examples, right? Because hearing impairment, you could say, well, well anything could work. Um, visual impairment, maybe more so. Um, so I guess uh, maybe that's the two, two questions. Do we think it's worth activities being connected to these disabilities? And actually, do we think these are even useful? I think it's worth bringing up, I think it was um, Michelle's point earlier, correct me if I, uh, sorry if I've got that wrong, um, around whether impairment is the right word. I think that's something we should consider because as, as I think it was Michelle saying that people who are maybe um, don't see as well, don't consider themselves to have a visual impairment necessarily. So that language might be a bit, well that might make, um, I guess it it depends how that gets kind of shown up, right? Because if that's a supplier kind of ticking a box saying yes, this activity is suitable for people with visual impairments, that could be one thing. Whereas if that's displayed to a consumer, then that's something. So that language point I think is something which, I mean it wouldn't change necessarily the structure, it's just the wording. Um, and then, sorry, if, uh, on your second point, I forgot what that was, so I'm going to stop talking now. <laughs> Accessibility at, and on the activity list. No. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I mean, personally, I don't have a lot of experience with that kind of thing. So I guess I'd, I'd look to those who, who might. So, so yeah, so if we, if we stick, st st for things like that about language, it's really good feedback and definitely we should revisit the word impairment here. But if we, if we focus first of all on what do we need rather than how are we displaying it? So do we think, you know, this is actually useful against the event, against the facility uh, and the place and against the activity itself? Is it, sorry, for just me, to clarify, I think it, are these... Sorry, sorry go on. Go on in. I think it was getting in, and then there was someone else as well. The, the, yes, I'm afraid it was a bit of a, a dead heat there. And I think it's important. And I think it's important because um, you know we are trying to get to people who are um, not going through the conventional routes, and people who are in rehabilitation, for example. So they've got a uh, you know broken leg or whatever. And I think there will be events which specifically will help them, possibly even put on deliberately for rehabilitation. Um, and whatever the they may you may drill down into what that is, but also long term illnesses. Mm. So, you know, we've got some here Parkinson's stroke, and people who may not be able to uh, participate in spinning, uh, having tried it once and it nearly killed me. Um, if I was actually properly ill, then I, I, would, I, I wouldn't cope. I can imagine a spinning for disabled or spinning for rehabilitation, which took things more gently. And I can see that that would be really valuable um, to look in a city. I've just broken my leg, at least it's an exercise, I, I won't be able to do anything properly for six months. And what can I do that's, that's more gentle, but keeps me fit? So I think that's potentially very valuable. What the categories are, that's another question, but I think the value is strong. Great, thank you Ian. And, and was that Michelle that was just before Ian? Uh, um, no, that was Cecilia no. from Scotland. Oh, sorry. 
no, that's okay. Um, do I need to press anything to, to, uh, to or do I just start talking? Sure. Okay, great. <laughs> um, so um, I think that um, w one of my questions was that whether this is, um, are, the, is, are the accessibility support, the properties as we've called them, are they going to be um, just for providers to tag or are they at the moment um, also for um, participants? When you say pro for providers to tag, you mean who is assessing? Uh, so would a provider be, um, yes, yeah, saying whether something is, whether an activity is going to uh, be suitable for a certain audience? Or? Yes. So yeah. um, but pulling on the, the information from the last kind of last year when we did this, um, there was a big question um, with, with the EFTS guys about um, who assesses the, 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 the activity. Um, yeah. There was a discussion about creating some kind of online questionnaire to help people understand what these tick boxes represent. Um, there was a lot of talk about that. What actually ended up happening was the implementers who have currently been doing this have literally just put some tick boxes in to their systems, which have a tick against each, and the provider, when they're filling in the activity information, sees the list. Um, and so there's currently not even any guidance associated with those. Uh, I know okay. there was the kind of some ambition to do that before, but I, I, I don't think we um, kind of had clear owners on the uh, on the actions. So, and has there been um, have, has there been consultation with disabled people about um, things like the terminology um, and people obviously with longer term health conditions as well, Michelle, um, with the point that you were making? Because um, I'm just I think um, m my feeling, but again, it's it's uh, an assumption um, is that it the free text um, aspect of it is probably going to be really helpful if that all has further explanations for people to be able to choose, you know, if they get enough uh, inf um, information about the activity and um, what the environment's going to be like and what's going to be available that they can, um, that, you know, obviously might choose to participate in something that's specifically for people with visual impairment, but they might not. Um, and hopefully the kind of level of information in there would be enough for them to be able to make that choice or to be able to contact somebody to get any further information. Um, but um, yeah, I guess I, sorry, I haven't been involved in this work up to this point. So there might be quite a lot of context that I'm missing. Um, but in, has the sort of past um, work around it involved much consultation yet? So the, uh, uh, we haven't done any direct consultation as, as yeah. part of active in terms of the ODI side. Um, but people who have brought their ideas forward have done uh, i suppose have there, there have been different levels of um we've checked this and our and the people we've talked to think that type yeah stuff yeah. so i i can't i couldn't reference any direct studies but um for example with the with the efts uh, stuff i understand mm. that 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 conversation was grounded in um some understanding of of what users want uh, but it's, it's a really good question i i don't know if, if anyone's commissioned any studies or if if we think that would be a useful thing how are we? I mean, I suppose there's something else. Is this? It's obviously this is a this is a forum for standards across the sector. But I I I would I would wonder whether it, has this been done before? Presumably, someone somewhere has already tackled this question. Or are we doing this for the first time? Do you think? Um, as the, the BPA, we've um, we've tackled it from a, a different angle. Um, we tend to um, think of the impairment groups in terms of the Paralympic context um, which is um, there are um, some even more, less useful <laughs> groups essentially um, to uh, to consumers so um, these uh, and, and they they involve um, uh, spinal cord injury cerebral palsy so being quite specific in some places visual impairment uh, but they don't they don't reference hearing impairment they don't reference mental health issues um, so the, I think this this group is um, is at the, the accessibility support list. From from my point of view, and from what I know from conversations with the FDS Activity Alliance, uh, and looking at we're we're, we're putting together um, a desk um, study on existing research at the moment um, as part of our Parasport um, website project. Um, and uh, this is the type of information um, that is useful. And I would say the language. Um, I don't see a problem with Im impairment. Um, there's there's lots of different um, different schools of thought on this, obviously. Um, but we we would tend to be guided by organisations like EFDS, who have done lots of research and have lots of contact with um, various um, um, so 
communities and groups and um, focus groups and things like that. So um, I don't see a problem with the with the language. But um, oh yeah, I would, I would strongly support this being um, a useful list um, from our point of view and from what we know. Okay, so it's that's really interesting. So it sounds like the, when you do your user research then for the website project that's coming up, would you are, you are you going to be kind of validating this as part of that then? Uh, validating this as in the standard or the well, I, I well maybe I was reading between the lines there. I, what you sounded like you were saying was you've already got a list that's quite specific. This looks like a better list, um, so you might think about using this for your website. Uh, when you do the project that you're about to do and then therefore would you be testing that or or would you be using a different list or use, using the old list? Yeah, we don't know yet. Um, the, the the two uh, the things that we know are that from the Paralympic context, you know, we need to, to, to certainly think communicate from the Paralympic context because we are the Paralympic Association. So that that makes sense to, to our audience in one respect. But we know from talking to um, the FDS and others over the years that um, the Paralympic contest context isn't actually that useful for most people in a sort of grassroots level um, who don't um, you know that the classification system that we use in the Paralympics isn't actually very useful and 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 certainly chops out kind of certain sports for certain people when actually they are available um, mm. so this is from our from the audience point of view a more useful list um, so I think we we're, we're in the throes of um, working out how uh, how we approach that now um, but we are approaching it with um, this open active project in mind um, and publishing our data and 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 then using um, the, um, the published data too so um, that this is certainly very central to kind of what we're doing at the moment and um, and I think it, it being part of um, Part of the project is, is is useful. Brilliant. And so, does any that sounds really great? And it sounds like there might be an opportunity there to test some of this. Does anybody else have any opportunities to test or or or, or have tested this kind of stuff? Kirsty, do you have any opportunities? I know that you have, um, you know, big kind of um, consultation groups, and um, that you, I don't know kind of what the process is for accessing. Um, the people and when it happens and things, but do you have any kind of forum to do some testing? Oh, sorry, I couldn't unmute myself then. Um, so, at Disability Rights UK, we do have the opportunity to kind of create uh, focus groups or um, groups where we can just ask people with a range of different disabilities what their thoughts and opinions are on these kinds of, like this sort of wording or or whatever else and I do strongly think that you do need to be involved in disabled people um, like kind of from the very beginning with this kind of stuff so that you know that it's practically gonna work and it is being designed with them in mind and with them going along for the ride so it's not just other people making the decisions for them even though I do know that a lot of this stuff is probably based on work where it has had that conversation with disabled people in the past, but um, I think probably more consultation or something needs to be done with disabled people um, to kind of make sure we are getting it right and we're not just doing the same thing that has already been done before and hasn't worked. Is that something that disability rights could support with, Kirsty? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We can yeah. do that. And we do do that um, with lots of other organisations. So if there is something particular in mind, then we can go out and create a focus group and work together on that, if that's something mm. that you think would be useful. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it's, it's that you guys have obviously done, you know, look, great work around it, but I think it's probably the more consultation, the better. And I think um, once, you know, it's, it's developed um, to this point, it's now a case of trying to test it um, a little bit further with users, I think. Does that does that sound um, reasonable? I don't know, kind of where what stages it's all at as well in terms of the um, timeframes and things like that. But no, I think that sounds that sounds absolutely brilliant. Um, we would love more user testing on this stuff. I think part of the um, the um, reservations about the proposal uh, when we put it through into the spec as is is that is there was a, a kind of that that lack of uh, what well, I think one of the notes actually in that proposal is. 
Um, this is just gleaned from the data. We have we have done this bottom yeah. up. It's not it's not been done kind of user user centric. Um, and, and absolutely, I think that it would be a really essential because if we don't have the users brought in from the beginning, then we we're not really not going to get them active, which is the whole point of this. So. Um, yeah. And I think that's actually um, a, a, a really kind of good um, point about um, particularly having disability rights um, and activity alliances insight as well is that disability rights are not uh, a sports specific organisation. So the, um, you're going to have um, quite a kind of broad audience, which I think is really good in terms of thinking about inactivity as well. Mm. That sounds great. Um, I was just, sorry, go on. Sorry, I, I was just going to say from a Richmond group perspective, mm. um, We've obviously got people again. It's sort of um, you know we've we've got health charities representing a wide range of different conditions or multiple conditions, um, and some of the work that we're doing at the moment with Sport England is looking at sort of message testing about physical activity for people who are really inactive, and I'm just wondering whether or not there's a way that we might be able to test something a bit more granular like this within some of that work. So um, I wonder I might. Sort of take that away and see if I can have that conversation. Um, because the, the part of the, the work that we're trying to do is to create a kind of a call to action for people. But if we then create that call to action and signpost people to, you know, class finders and <laughs> um, and activities, and then they can't filter it and it or it isn't meaningful, then we've kind of done an own own goal. So I, I think that it would be useful for us if we can support with that kind of focus group process. And Brilliant. Michelle, is that is that work with Al Strang by any chance, or is that something is, else? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Because we're yeah. all in the same team, so we can definitely link that up quite easily. Oh, brilliant! It's all nice, <laughs> isn't it? it? Works that nicely. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah. <laughs> and, and just uh, Michelle, just to clarify, scope in that uh, is does that include this kind of broader special requirements list, or do you think you would be focused more on that kind of accessibility support narrower list? Um, I, I think that would need to be a separate conversation because there's, there's, yeah, there's quite a lot, a lot to unpick here, isn't there? Yeah, well, I was, I was just trying to understand. I suppose is, is um, my simple view. Uh, the uh, Richmond group is going to be more interested in special requirements because of the breadth of the charities. But is it actually the case that that actually the, 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 the disability and impairment side, rather than kind of things like stroke and autism? is is kind of more or is this all one conversation and actually there's different levels of granularity on the same thing sorry i'm being naive yeah, yeah. I, I think so i think it's just because there'll be people it could be that um i mean someone referenced you know someone could have a stroke um and have a stroke and have you know a physical impairment and a cognitive impairment as a result of that and then right. have loneliness issues and mental health you know it's sort of there, there could be a hell of a lot wrapped up so it's just trying to think about what's a really simple way um, of kind of helping people to find the thing that's right for them. And it might be that it's suggesting it's just a very specific stroke group with a person who's fully qualified in stroke rehab. Um, so there's that kind of the workforce element as well as the space and the equipment all kind of mm -hmm. wrapped up. Yeah, that's a really good point um, in terms of who's delivering it. Um, I think as well the the special requirements list it, it's um, yeah it's a bit tricky because some of it's sort of quite specific conditions and then some of it's um, maybe activities that you would like based on something or um, you know say the chair based or that you've had a GP referral it, it's kind of a bit um, um, I think it probably needs a bit more work in terms of really kind of clarifying what that means because actually is the information that we want um, more less based on the condition that people might have and more based on what support they might need as a result of that which you don't necessarily know from just the condition right it's interesting so so actually depending on the stage or the state of the condition that there's, there's different if this isn't enough for that um yeah would there be would there be situations where um so Nuffield would probably be another good one to occasion this because I know they run kind of specialist clinics with various conditions. Um but where where you would have a particular condition and you would be searching for something um for that that would support that. Um I mean something like autism, for example, is a bit of an interesting one because I feel like you would obviously would need special care available for the session, depending on the extent and, and are they kids, are they adults? Um, 
but uh, but I don't know if we just if we just bundled that into some one of the high level ones here, if that would be a useful filter. Um, well, to be honest, you might not you might not need special support. That's the <laughs> sure. That's yeah, the kind of, uh, I, sorry. I agree with that as well. So um, a lot of the time, if people do need extra support, they're probably going to be there with like a personal assistant or like if it's a child then a parent or something so they might not actually need extra support in terms of it being like a one-on-one -on -one thing but I think it is just important to know whether or not the people running the sessions are kind of aware of autism and know like kind of the basics around it and it is friendly and welcoming towards people with autism mm. rather than them needing to know like specifics it, it's more kind of like the um, their attitudes and stuff towards it, I think, is quite important with some of this stuff. And so yeah, there's two levels, aren't there? It's a bit tricky, yeah, because you've kind of got, yeah, this sort of culture and attitude piece, and then um, maybe, Michelle, what you were talking about as well, that you could get quite specific skill sets uh, around um, uh, conditions and uh, um, whatever the um, the effects of your condition are, the skill set that the person might need is, might vary depending on that. Um, so I think there are probably two different strands to this piece of it. I would, I would, and I don't know what anyone else thinks, but I would wonder as to the, um, uh, you know, the, or for opportunities being able to sort of self-identify as being autism friendly. Um, there's there seems to be a lot of scope for that just to be um, a, a completely unrigorous thing. Um, I don't know. It, 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 it seems um, it seems a difficult one to to rely on the the data for to sort of someone sort of just to declare themselves autism friendly. Though I guess there's kind of um, there's the, the the next level down of kind of trying to verify this stuff is quite difficult mm -hmm. um, versus actually sort of physically having some you know. Um, uh, parking, changing rooms, um, locker space, that kind of thing. That's kind of a thing that they can very definitely say. Um, so this is, it's a difficult one. It's a very difficult one. I think it's really interesting. It's kind of where the standards kind of almost, where did the standards end? And at what point do you start moving into that kind of customer experience, which yeah. is key? I mean, especially for people who have potentially like, um, you know, particular needs. But I mean, it definitely runs across more or less everything we do in Sport England that you know even if you're just looking at kind of like the the this girl can type women's campaign that we're running like even that a lot of the time comes down to the experience that people are getting so it's a big challenge for us I think. The thing I was going to say that it seems to me you've got two different levels here you've got events which are specifically intended for people with autism or who are paraplegic um, uh, in which case it's, it's intended to attract those people and more or less only those people. So perhaps more towards the more severe cases. And you've got events which are uh, friendly towards autism. So uh, uh, an autism specific event, I'd expect to have practitioners there who were trained in autism. An autism friendly event, I would expect to be uh, probably more focused around just having more quietness and be more isolated from people. Uh, and just being more sympathetic to it, but could be tended to be by people who were neurotypical. So I don't know how we fit that in, but I, it seems to me there are different things there. Did I ask a question, which is, um, how, how much do we know the people that we're using the system, are you populating, populating the events in there? How much do they actually have of this type of information? I'm just thinking, listening to everybody, you know, it is a spec, it's a, a living proposal. I wonder whether it's worth doing the first part, the accessibility parts first, allowing the accessibility information to capture some of the, the various um, points that have been raised here, like the culture versus um, you know, the actual implementations, and then letting the data that, the, you know, the, the events as they come through actually feed into revisions of the spec as, as, you, as you move along. Yes, there's, I think there's, a, there's definitely a data capture question here in general, um, and, and I suppose as well, it's kind of what, what we have in terms of prompts um, for that data capture. So I know that, that several of the systems that have kind of been, they, can, they look at the standard and go, 
what do I need to implement to make my system, you know, fit with this? And they look at the standard and, and obviously assume that, and, and fairly that we've obviously put a lot of work into thinking about the things and they can just put the tick boxes in. But actually, I, I, think, I think the guidance about um, how those tick boxes are presented to those, the data publishers, um, to the, you know, the, the activity providers, um, and, um, and what the criteria around assessing these things is, is probably uh, just as important. If, you know, we just put these in and tick boxes and free, and free text fields, it's likely that we'll get, um, we'll, we'll get a mixture, but I, I imagine that for the bigger providers, they will um, be probably reticent to tick things unless they're very sure. Um, because of the implications and for the small ones they might just tick all of them because they think well I'll just deal with it when it comes. But, um, but isn't that the feedback that we that we kind of want in a way is that I don't think you're going to capture obviously we'll, we'll try and capture as much as we can but you're not going to capture everything down to the nth degree so you know just looking at accessibility support say under um, under visual impairments they make you know you can think of them various sub classifications under there we wouldn't capture all of that but as a kind of a first step of getting getting some information in there and being able to populate events with some data and then allowing you know further iterations to to refine that to refine the other parts look at what actually is in there what what's going into the accessibility information field and Oops. then try and tease out tease out the various sort of um, further further specifications from there yes sorry i wasn't clear earlier um there and my slides have stopped moving. There we go. Uh, so the information that is so so just to be clear, the standard currently has this in it as of right now. That's that's in the standard. And as, okay, sorry. So no, no, that's, that's okay. As I should be clear earlier. And it also has this accessibility information. And the British Cycling text is actually live. That's British Cycling's. That's the data currently being published. So um, this is being used in 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 production in real life um, and capturing. A variety of things. Uh, this spreadsheet uh, uh, actually shows which of the live data publishers are, are, um, are pr pr producing what information. Um, and um, we've got, uh, so I can give you the summary of, of, of the data that exists at the moment. And the summary is that some things, some people, like I was just saying, some people tick everything um, and the event is nothing to do with anything that would necessarily um, be specifically supporting people, so it's just a it's just a general yoga session or something, and they just ticked everything. Um, some people uh, don't like with the bigger providers um, seem to not want to be as keen to tick because obviously they need to know what that means, and and, and those systems tend not to capture that information yet anyway. Um, so generally, the, the data that's available is uh, for from smaller providers um, and. Uh, that's, that's kind of what we have. But, but I think actually Paul, what you're saying really is we should be testing. We should be, you're looking at information um, and maybe as part of the user testing piece, making sure that we kind of compare what's already out there and, and how that's working with what people would ideally like. I, th I think so, because what you've, as you've just shown already, you've got two disparate sets of suppliers using the same things in two different ways, you know, so one's just ticking everything and that worries me a bit that they don't care that they're ticking everything if they are. And then, so they're offering an event where somebody might turn up and they can't participate in that event, even though the event says it does. So that makes, to me, that makes that data a bit untrustworthy, if you see what I mean. Conversely, the, the opposite way, the, the people that are, that are not ticking everything are losing out on potential pe potential people coming to those events, aren't they? Yeah. I think it's, it, it, it's worth us, it, you were talking with Nick about those kind of guidelines as a, you know, you know what, if, what is it about this that I'm going to tick visual impairment, you know, what means that that's suitable or not. And maybe that's something which we could try and kind of develop or test with, um, in conjunction with those kind of disabled groups that um, uh, people, Kirsty and Cecilia and others were kind of talking about earlier on. I mean, just take, sorry, just taking on some, some of the examples or the experience that, that we've had, when we started looking at sort of accessibility onto the towpath, um, we looked at it in, in one particular way, but then we actually got people using wheelchairs down there and they were highlighting things like even just the camera of the towpath was an important factor for them, you know, to, 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 in, you know, to enjoy going out, you know, having some, some exercise of some sort. So, but actually catching the fact, first of all, that you can get onto you know, a towpath or you can get in somewhere is an important thing for that, that constituent of people. 
Yeah, absolutely. So, so to, to kind of summarise what I, I think I've kind of heard here, it sounds like there's a um, two there's, there's there's various stages, almost like a little matrix. Um, there's the user facing side, and then there's the provider provider facing uh, side. So the user facing side okay. concerns are, you know, is this something that we've tested? The users actually want this information. Um, is this something that works for them? If there's an activity finder and these things, things are in there, would it actually be a useful search? Um, for the provider facing side, it's people just ticking everything. Is that because there's not enough guidance? Are these things obvious enough in what they mean? Are people be able to, to um, reliably supply the information um, because of what we've, we've given them? And then, um, so there's both of those sides and potential user testing on both of those sides. Um, and then there's also within each of those, there's obviously this, this level of specificity, which is, you know, there's, there's obviously some really interesting content in the depths of this. Actually, on the user facing side, is it useful if we could capture it? Probably at the moment, it's not very accurately captured. On the provider facing side, is it feasible to capture it? Because actually, this is so detailed and, and unless you've got a particular session, uh, as we were talking about earlier, that's focused on autism, whether it be friendly or whether it be a specialist session, um, you know, is that information something that people are going to be uh, interested in providing and comfortable in providing? Um, so so um, does that sound like a kind of fair summary of where we are? Yeah. Yeah, to me. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. yep. Brilliant. Well, that's been really useful. Um, time has flown by. We've got four whole minutes left. <laughs> Um, so, um, so thank you, everybody. That was that was fascinating. Um, and uh, it sounds like we've got from that. Um, we're obviously, we're, obviously we're, um, we're going to write this up and um, and circulate it. But also, uh, the video will be online for other people to watch and um, and uh, and reflect on and, and feedback on. So, um, what would be interesting, I, I propose as a next step. But um, let's see what you guys think. Is it sounds like there's two sets of unit testing that need to happen here. Um, and really. Before we do that, there's not much else before because um, we've already got a spec. Uh, it's already got some data. Um, the next proposals provide further detail on that data. We haven't really validated whether the current set of detail is, is what we need. And so probably the next step is, is that user testing. And so uh, potentially then if, if mm -hmm. we're happy to, to proceed with that, it would be a kind of call for volunteers to um, be involved in that to to help move that forward um, and then um, either another call like this in, 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 a, in a public uh, forum or, or if, if it would be better to have that as an offline conversation with just those interested in, in creating that we can we can facilitate a separate discussion um, and so uh, for that if that sounds right um, is that something that we we would be able to pick up on another call like this or do you think an off, offline discussion would work uh, better for you or organizations involved because at least three people on the call were talking about it. No volunteers. <laughs> <laughs> I think from a from a user testing perspective, perhaps um, it's best if maybe me and Cecilia we could catch mm. up um, yeah. and kind of uh, touch base with Kirsty and Michelle and others um, who maybe aren't on the call and just figure out how best that might work because I can imagine that you might need to do that in a physical location kind of more than online maybe i don't i don't know um i've not done that kind of user testing before but um i can kind of talk through some of the practicalities of what that might look like and then i can kind of be that central point of contact between um you guys at the odi and kind of the support england side and hopefully help kind of move that forward as well if that's useful yeah that would be great is i think does that sound okay Kirsty? yeah and that's Michelle, and we'll good. take it from there and yeah and, and we'll um, yeah get some um, other people involved as well. It'd be interesting to get Activity Alliance take on it as well. I think because they've obviously been involved with a bit um, of the um, prior work. So. Fantastic. Good to me. Thanks, Izzy. That's uh, that's brilliant. <laughs> you took the action. Yes. Uh, <laughs> It is my job. I kind of have to, so it's yeah. fine. <laughs> That's really, really great. Um, and so potentially the next call for, for this subject will be when we, when we get back together to review the results of that. Um, uh, and we'll, we can do that in the same open forum and then decide how to proceed given the results. So potentially an output in the form of a, you know, a brief presentation or just a chat through what you've learned um, would, would, be, would be really helpful. Um, so in the last uh, one minute, because it just hit time, has anyone else got any other business to uh, raise uh, today? Or any other thoughts? 
Uh, okay, fantastic, great. Well, the next call uh, coming up is around booking. So for those of you that are interested in that, uh, that will be on the 26th of October, which is on Friday. Um, and uh, so uh, let us know if you're, if you're keen to join that. Um, and then after that, we've got another one on the 7th of November because we're trying to get that sorted. Uh, so that, um, we haven't got another call on this topic scheduled in yet. Um, but if you guys are interested in, in kind of um, uh, another one earlier before that other user feedback one happens, then you know, do shout on the mailing list. We can organize another one if anyone's got any burning um, topics to cover. Otherwise, we'll wait for Izzy to, um, to bring back uh, this to topic and uh, we'll, we'll schedule something in. Um, so thanks so much for your time, everyone. Have a good Thank afternoon. You. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. 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 Thanks.